administration, higher education is moving rapidly and changing upon all of our institutions. And four and a half years ago, we were dreaming about having a QET. After the SACS group came in here and criticized us for trying to develop a QEP that would save the world, QEP should be very focused and it should be objectives that you can accomplish and you can measure them and they will have an impact on students that can be made. And uh, in those dark days of people telling us we didn't know how to get things right, mostly peer, peer institutions, people who came from other institutions, uh, we spent a lot of nights trying to figure out how to respond. And uh, the innovation that came from Dr. Jennings was a pleasant surprise to me. Uh, she actually saved us during those uh, QEP hearings. She came up with a plan that made a whole lot of sense to me for the QEP and the literacy effort. She uh, documented it so people could understand it who were outside peers. I think one lady from Chicago was especially critical of Texas Southern's uh, inability to write uh, uh, effective uh, proposals. And uh, so she wrote one that was uh, very well received. And uh, I, I was glad to be able to fund it. So it, just, it was an example of there is there are a lot of people on this campus who if you give them the initiative, they will take advantage of it and make the university look good. And so this is a day that I'm really uh, happy that we're having this opening, but I was really happy four years ago when you were able to get the SACS people to sign on to our QEP. And of course, Dr. O'Hea had to lead the effort, but I want all you all to acknowledge her hard work. And let's give her a So that people, you, know, Sonny, you, you heard Sonny quickly say I was an accountant, but I'm much more than an accountant, <laughs> uh, I can assure you. And, uh, but I, I'm not trying to be critical of him, but it, 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 uh, my background helps me try to allocate resources where we get more bang for our buck, that's all it is. You know, higher education, uh, the legislature always says, no matter what we give to education or to educators, they always come back the next session and ask for more money. They say you all never ask for less money. We never can. We never can satisfy the requirements of higher education for funding, and they get frustrated and they get tired of it. But we have to have some success stories, and so I know how to put money. I think in a place where it will have a return on investment. Certainly, the QEP having impact on students will have a return on investment. But also, the teaching institute when uh, Dr. O'Hea presented that idea as an innovation, creative idea. Uh, he knew about these institutes at other universities, Creighton and other places. And so bringing, bringing the best practice here was something that was kind of easy to make that decision to do that. I was concerned that the faculty was not getting involved with the requirements to educate the Gen Xers. They call them Gen Xers? They might be Gen Double Xers now. <laughs> <laughs> the, the way the students are learning now and what we have to do to have an impact on them is different. It's, it's different today and it will be even more different in the future. And so if we can get our faculty, who I think just need the tools to be able to address this new group of students, this new generation, then I think we'll all benefit from that as an institution. Now, we won't be taking one step forward and one step backwards. We actually have faculty on this campus who, even though they haven't been given a lot of opportunities, some of them have taken TSU's name and done some great things. And so the Teaching Institute, uh, the chairman of the board, was so impressed with your work in Dallas uh, that it filtered down to me. The first time I met you, the chairman was talking about your initiatives in terms of dealing with high school and how to teach the new generation Xers or double Xers or Xers cubed or squared. <laughs> but <laughs> the point is that if we needed to have an initiative like this, we needed to provide the faculty with the opportunity to jump in there, as Dr. Ford knows, and roll up your sleeve and make learning a uh, much more res uh, responsive uh, tool for the children of, of today and tomorrow. So I want to thank you for the bold initiative and Dr. Pia, both of you all. It was easy to place money on the teaching institute, the teaching and learning uh, center. So I can just congratulate you for this effort as well. Yeah. My final point is this. We were trying to build uh, a, uh, get the legislature to build a new library, about a uh, $64 million library. And uh, I've seen Morgan State's new library. And if you haven't seen it, it's, uh, you got to go online and see Morgan State's new Earl Richardson Library. Uh, that's the model of the vision I have for Texas Southern is to build a library like that. And hopefully within that library will be uh, room for both QEP to continue 
as well as a teaching and learning excellent center to continue. So this is a temporary home, but my plan is that if we can get that uh, uh, that tuition revenue bond for a library, we will put both of these uh, entities in the new library. So that's what the plans are at this point. I congratulate Dr. Opia and, and uh, Dr. Jennings for the initiatives, and as I said before, your bold initiatives now, you know, we just want to be a part of it. I, I think four and a half years ago, it was, I, I, I didn't see any real initiatives coming from the TSU, but now I see the initiatives happening everywhere. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will now call uh, Dr. Kimberly McLeod to come and introduce uh, the board, the select board. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Kimberly McLeod, the interim director of the Teaching and Learning Excellence Center. I'm an associate professor in the College of Education and the Department of Counseling. And welcome and thank you all for coming and supporting TLAC and QT for our ribbon cutting. Um, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. And I can say we have a strong chain of advisory board members that have committed their time and their service to help us establish in one semester a hallmark institute from the the qualitative and quantitative data that we've already collaborated. We submitted four articles to peer review publication. So the Teaching and Learning Ex Excellence Center at Texas Southern University is going to be a national model. We have um, a critical friends group that we will be instituting in the uh, fall semester. Um, it will be one of the first universities to put something like that together. It's a national model that's used quite a bit in K-12. It's beginning to make its way in higher ed, but we'll be one of the first universities to celebrate that success here at TSU. So with that, I'd like to introduce our board, and if those board members will come and join me. Everything we put together has been a team and collaborative effort of Dr. Michael Seidler, representing English. Uh, in fact, why you guys introduce yourself and your respect there? I'm Michael Seidler. I do English, but I'm also the director of the freshman seminar programs in developmental education. Jay Perkins, music. Remy Abimola, Center for Online Education and Instructional Technology. Lily Chong, Pharmacy. Cherry Gooden, College of Education. And this board actually um, came together and they were actually nominated by Dr. Elizabeth Brown Guillory who helped organize our inaugural board and they have really stepped to the plate. We have already provided and we'll share and save the dates, our programming for the entire academic year, including our workshop, our breakout sessions, the registration process, the collection of data and the reporting of data. So we are ready, we open um, our arms to receive you, provide professional development on teaching, learning, and advising. I'm Kimberly McLeod. This is a phenomenal TLAC board. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we will call on Professor Abolina Jennings to introduce uh, the QEP board. I if you can, board. the board. Can you do the same thing? Those of you that are on my board, please get closer. Um, there are only <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Um, introduce yourself again. <laughs> Michael Seidler. Remy Abimov. And I must say that I'm the um, director of the QEP is none other than our promos. He is the our head, the head of the board, and the um, head worker, actually. <laughs> when it was time to redo the QEP, it was uh, Dr. Opia and Dr. Maddox and the rest of the board that really uh, put it together and continue to be the, uh, the leadership of the board. We are very grateful to the president. Uh, this, this is a support group for the faculty. It's a support group to do for the, um, for the faculty to do for the students what needs to be done, and that is step up learning so that they can progress faster and better so that we, our graduation rate will change. In order to do that, we have had, the QB has had a, a a pilot year in which we uh, tried out many things in the freshman courses that we do information literacy and communications literacy. Um, this summer we have uh, used the data from the pilot to revise syllabi. Um, we have not only revised syllabi, but we have added 
um, a data collection sheet, uh, a grading sheet, an electronic grading sheet for each of the courses so that we can in fact collect not just in the semester grades but student learning uh, objectives, actual um, outcomes um, and, and, and use those to do better next time around. We have not only uh, done the syllabus but we have also done what the English department and others on campus have wanted to do for many years and that is to have an online OWL, an online learning center um, uh, online, as you know, on the TSU web, it is up and running. The QEP website is also up and running, and we have provided for all of these freshman level courses, Blackboard master courses, to serve as like a file cabinet for resources and for um, syllabi and for just everything that, um, that teachers will need to do better by their students. Um, there are also um, things for the students, uh, the OWL for example, and a, uh, a Blackboard uh, Grammar Basics that any teacher can use uh, to supplement instruction. In other words, we're trying to um, make the academic resource on campus to step it up so that, uh, and we can do that only if we work together, and I thank you all very much for helping us do this. Thank you. Absolutely. Introduce your staff so that we know who your staff is. The staff, we have this wonderful person who is Stephanie Brute Phillips. She is our favorite. She coordinates both staff, and then we have been very, very fortunate to have um, a, a, a staff of graduate students. Would you all come forward? Graduate students. Um, <laughs> to the speech lab and we're hoping many other learning videos that will be available to everyone on campus. Thank you, Mr. Smiley. Yeah. I'd like to acknowledge the fact that we have some academic yeah. deans here and department yeah, chairs that believe in the group here. If you're around, just raise your hands. Academic deans and department chairs, I see them around. And of course, if I don't introduce the last person, I'll be in trouble. The chair of the faculty senate is hiding in the corner. Thank you all for coming. I don't know if it's a present. I just want to also thank you.